Today they announced the Hall of Fame eight finalists for the 2020 Ford C. Frick Award. Boston's Joe Castiglione, longtime Montreal Expos play-by-play -play man Jacques Doucette, Cleveland's Tom Hamilton, Ken Harrelson, uh, current Cubs announcer Pat Hughes, former Red Sox voice Ned Martin, St. Louis Cardinals legend Mike Shannon, and Tampa Bay Rays announcer Dwayne Statz. Mm. How's John Sterling not on that list? Now, when I give you the criteria for the list, now, th there are some that love John, there are some that don't love John. Mostly it's the critics that don't love John, but I think you'd be hard-pressed to find fans that don't love him. Um, so the final voting for the award will be conducted by an electorate comp comprised of the 11 living Frick Award recipients and four broadcast historians. Okay. Um, and here are the criteria. Where is it? It's called National Voice, all right? So the criteria for selection is as follows. Commitment to excellence, quality of broadcasting abilities, reverence within the game, popularity with fans, and recognition by peers. There are very few announcers more popular with the fan base than John, I think. You're right. So I'm not saying he has to get in. How's he not one of the eight? Now, I'm not going to sit here and pick apart people that I think he's better than, but he's better than some of the people in that final eight. I do think there is a New York bias because of what you just said. Oh, he's in New York, so of course he gets exposure. Of course everybody thinks he's great. I think Gary, I think Gary Cohen deserves to be in. I think Michael Kay deserves to be in. But I think sometimes the New York announcers are held to higher scrutiny. So let's, let's give the smaller market guys their due because they don't get the recognition the way the New York guys do. Oh, the Yankees always win, so John's they calls are always on SportsCenter, and everybody knows who he is. And I also think John's been hurt because when he has made his share of mistakes, which he has done recently as he's gotten older, People have kind of made fun of that, and it's become kind of a big deal. They even touched on that in the real sports. So that might hurt him as far as looked upon as quality. But I do think in a lot of those types of things, there is the New York bias of let's give the Tampa guy a little love. Yeah. Let's get the Seattle guy a little love because they don't get the national exposure that the Yankee announcer I, I think I think they double, they go the other way. Yes, they, I, I absolutely they think They so, so don't want to credit New York that sometimes it gets overdone. Right. But I also I just find this so... I truly believe I, I grew up listening to the best radio baseball announcer of this generation. But I don't know what that's based on except John, for John Miller. Yes. Well, John in. Miller's amazing. And, and, but, right. like, he is in, he is, there's, there's something to me that is objective. It's just like a perfect broadcast listening to him call a game. But that's still subjective. Right. That's still me just. I mean, Dan Shulman's better than most of the guys on that list. By the way, I think Dan Shulman is going to be one of the greatest of all time. I mean, I, but that, you know why I think we like him, though? Both right. those people I think we love because they have these powerful and sort of neutral sounding voices. Mm -hmm. Really deep, neutral. They sound old timey in a way. Right. I think next year you can vote on national. So the next time that Sterling, who's 81 years old, can actually be considered to get in is two years from now. That's a bummer.